Hi, church family. Cecil Sanders back with you on Wednesday for our Wednesday evening devotional and prayer time. Just keep reminding you to help us out in extending our ministry. Uh, if you would like and share and comment on these posts, that would really help us. Uh, Hymns with Tim comes uh, this Friday, and then this Sunday morning, Mother's Day, we'll be online with worship around 9 o'clock. Thank you for joining us for that. Last Sunday, church family, uh, our message dealt with divine interruptions. Uh, we asked the question, you know, during this time of the coronavirus pandemic, when much of our horizontal activity is removed, uh, what might we do to consider uh, the meaning of this time? What is it that maybe God is wanting to teach us? I mean, we, we're not going to sporting events, we're not going to movies, uh, we're not going out to eat, uh, we're not in concerts, we're not shopping very much. With these sort of things out of the way, doesn't it make sense that we go vertical? Uh, doesn't it make sense that we call a time out and say, all right, Lord, what is it that you're wanting to teach us? What is this interruption that you've allowed to come into our lives? Well, church family, I think one of the main things that, that I'm learning and I, I believe all of us are learning is that this time of, of slowdown, of quarantine, is teaching us about our priorities about what really is most important. What should we be living for? You know, when Jesus was asked to, to summarize the entire uh, counsel of God, He was asked, what, what is the greatest commandment? Remember what He said? He said, this is the first and foremost commandment. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then the second one is like it. You're to love your neighbor as yourself. That's Matthew chapter 22, 37 and following. So what did Jesus say when it comes down to just summarizing what God really wants? It's to love God and love your neighbor. Love God supremely and love others deeply. I want to share with you a story about another time that a sickness devastated a community. It has to do with a missionary named Samuel Zwimmer. He was known as the Apostle to Islam because of his pioneering uh, missionary work, gospel work, uh, in the Arabian world, in the Muslim world. Uh, he was a missionary on the tiny island kingdom of Bahrain, located just off the east coast of the Arabian Peninsula. He and his wife, Amy, and their missionary team established a hospital there in Bahrain. It was one of the first hospitals in, in all of Arabia. And they uh, did a great ministry there through ministering to the sick and sharing the gospel. Uh, not far from that hospital, uh, it was established in 1903. Not far from the hospital is the old Christian cemetery. It's a, about a ha half acre uh, lot, dusty brown, surrounded by a large wall. And there are buried sailors and soldiers and diplomats who died in service while they were in Bahrain. The white crosses there on the, on the grave plots are, stand in stark contrast to that dusty, barren, brown landscape. But also there are these small, tiny graves of many children, uh, many children who were most vulnerable when epidemics came through uh, that region. So in 1904, Samuel and Amy Zwimmer suffered the loss of both their daughters in one week's time. First daughter was Amy. She was seven years old and the youngest daughter was Ruth. She was three year old. And their little graves are in that old Christian cemetery. Samuel Zwimmer uh, doesn't say much about this in his memoirs, but later on he communicated the, the, the depth of his grief the depth of his and Amy's sorrow, but also of their worship. It's interesting that, that uh, his wife, Amy, uh, came up with the epitaph for those grave markers in that old Christian cemetery there in Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain. Let me tell you what uh, the epitaph was. It came from Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. It says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive riches. Think about that, church family. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive 
riches. Here are the swimmers serving the Lord in a foreign place, giving their lives to reach Muslims for Christ, buried their treasured children in that cemetery. And as they grieved, yet they worshiped. Worthy is the Lamb to receive these riches, these precious treasures of ours, our little girls. Church family, I, I hope that during this time of the pandemic uh, and the inconveniences that, that we're going through, those are really minor compared to losing your children. But I hope that this time is causing us to search our hearts and to do an assessment, an evaluation of our priorities. Uh, what's most important is not eating out, going to sporting events, concerts, movies, shopping. It's not those things. What's most important is loving God and loving others. Yes, love your family. Yes, treasure your family. But most of all, highest of all, is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Worthy is Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Our Savior, our Redeemer, our Lord and Master, He is worthy of our utmost love and devotion. And He is worthy of all riches, even if it's those humans and family members we love most. Church family, I want us just to have a time of prayer here. And I want to ask you if you'd just join me. I'm just going to have my hands open. And, and if you'd just open your hands. And, and would you just, in your heart, agree and make a fresh commitment that, that Jesus is your first love and that He's worth everything to you and to us as a church. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for the truth of Your Word spoken from Jesus that the greatest priority in life is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you for dear loved ones, uh, blood family, and then spiritual family uh, within your body that, that we love dearly. Thank you that uh, we have rich, rich relationships. Lord, may those be our priorities, loving you supremely and loving others deeply. But Lord, when it ultimately comes down, more important than anything, even our own family, is our love and devotion to you. Thank you for the example of Samuel and Amy Zwimmer. Lord, may that be the passion and the longing of our hearts as a church, that Jesus Christ is worth our all. Lord, we do pray in this time of the of the coronavirus that we would evaluate where we stand with you that we would go vertical we would, we would look to you and that you would help us search our hearts and that our priorities would be aligned correctly with you and your heart and your word and lord as we continue to pray we pray for our leaders as they help us navigate these difficult times of the pandemic we pray for our president for the task force for our leaders for our governor lord help them to know wisely your wisdom what to do and how to lead us. Lord, we pray for those affected by the coronavirus. Lord, some directly, many indirectly. Lord, just particularly on our hearts right now are those who have been bereaved during this crisis. So many families who've lost loved ones and they haven't been able to have a, a, a meaningful, large gathering of supportive friends. We just ask your love and encouragement to them and especially those, Lord, that have lost, lost income and are suffering financially. And then, Lord, we do continue to ask for you give us wisdom as a church, knowing how best to lead into any kind of reentry, reopening, whenever that word comes. We just ask for your help there. We want to do the right things for your glory and for your honor, Jesus. Thank you so much for our church family. Thank you for your word. Thank you for time to, to turn our eyes to you. And we ask your praise and your blessing upon all that we do, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, church family.